Hey, my beauties, my name is, my hair is so messed up. Oh my God. Hi, my beauties, my name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel and I'm a board certified fellowship trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. So today I wanted to talk about new advances in technology in dermatology and cosmetic dermatology and aesthetics. So the reason why I wanted to do this video is because there is so many new advances in our field and it's hard to keep up and then sometimes when you see different things on social media, you don't know who to believe or you don't know who to trust and you don't know how much is hype and how much is real and how much is fake science. So I try to be a liaison between the medical community, specifically in the specialty of dermatology, and you guys, and keep you on the forefront of this knowledge. But because you know of my fellowship training and my amazing connection that you know I've had with my mentors and in industry, um, as a key opinion leader in this field, I have access to a lot of the first things before you know they become mainstream. So I want this channel to be a source of honesty and truth. And sometimes I may not know what the outcome is going to be or if a new technology is going to be worth it or something that will um, give better outcomes or be better for my patients. But we'll go through it together, but at least you'll get first access and first, I think, knowledge about different treatments as they come up in the specialty. So before I move on, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell as I drop new dermatologic info every Sunday. Drop a comment in the comment section and let me know what you guys wanna hear about. Sometimes I can't get back to your comments because I'm usually in the office treating and seeing my beauties and my patients, but I do see you, I hear you, and I'll comment when I can and I'll more importantly use those comments as content for my next video because that's how I know what you guys wanna hear about. And when anything new comes out on my side, like when I'm at an academic meeting or I hear a buzz within the medical community or um, you know my small group of uh, closely knit dermatology and laser experts when I hear something new going through clinical trials or about to launch I will definitely once they let me and give me permission to share that information with you too so that's how I keep up with the content and keep you guys up to speed um, in this rapidly and exciting career of uh, cosmetic dermatology Elacore is a micro coring device so when I was a fellow doing my procedural fellowship in um, cosmetic dermatology I actually participated in the clinical trials for this device. Hopefully I can gra grab a picture of it. I participated in the clinical trials back in like 2018 and it was amazing then. So five, six years later, I can only imagine how amazing this device is gonna be now. And hopefully I'll be able to demo it within the next like couple months and let you guys know, but it was engineered by a pioneer and giant in the field of dermatology, Dr. Rox Anderson, who's a very well-respected, highly contributing um, physician who I know and love and respect and have every dermatologist knows about Dr. Rox Anderson. So it was his concept. Um, he also is a venture of like cool sculpting, a fraxel, a VB, I mean, just a beautiful mind and just so well respected and a god in the field of dermatology, but it's his concept. And what it is, is it's micro coring of the skin. So it's not a laser. It's not an energy-based device. It basically takes out thousands of little punch skin biopsies. So basically little cores of skin kind of like microneedling would be. So I'm not a huge microneedling fan, but when microneedling first came out, I was all about it. I was so excited. And then when we had microneedling devices in our office, we're like, oh, well, we were excited for nothing. And, you know, the results aren't as impressive as we thought they were going to be. And, you know, maybe they'll improve the technology and they still may do that. But it's kind of on the same concept of microneedling, but just a lot more. So the micro coring works by taking thousands of little micro cores of the skin out. So it's picture that you have like a block of cheese, right? Not Swiss cheese, just regular cheese with no holes in it, solid, massive block of cheese. And you punch a bunch of holes out of it. So then it becomes looking like Swiss cheese. And then you take a tegaderm or you take some type of, we'll see what the technology is. I don't even know what the protocol is these days, but back in 2018, we would take some tegaderm, which is like a sticky type of adhesive, and squish the skin together. So you're basically taking out holes of skin and squishing it together, which basically tightens, erases fine lines and wrinkles. And I remember one of the first cases I did was a woman with her perioral rites or like lip lines, smokers lines, although she wasn't a smoker, but you get these lines even if you don't smoke and I'll get into that in another YouTube video. But basically she had these radiating lines and we did this, it was Elicor, it used to be um, Citralis back then and it literally like improved those lines by so much in one treatment and I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, like this is amazing and I can't wait for this to come to fruition. When is this gonna be available? And the people who were on the research and development side of things were like, oh, at least five to 10 years and I'm like, 
well, that sucks. Okay, well, now fast forward six years later, we're here. So I'm excited to um, share this with you. Now, again, this may end up not being what we thought it's going to be, but I don't think so. I'm pretty excited about it, and um, we'll keep you in the know with respect to Elicor. So it sounds scary, but it's basically just taking, sorry, I just broke the table. I'm going to keep going. We're going to keep the cameras rolling. So um, takes out little pieces of skin, but it looks like almost kind of how the skin is after microneedling. So tiny little like, you know, a little oozy sites, which instead of poking holes in the skin, it's taking pieces of skin out, which I know that sounds totally barbaric and crazy and inhumane, but it's a very elegant technology. So um, I'll comment on that and keep you in the know with respect to the data and the clinical you know, outcomes of this procedure and also what my colleagues are thinking of this, well-respected you know, people who are involved with clinical trials and on the forefront in, in this technology. So not all dermatologists are. There's a very close-knit, select group of us, and hopefully you, know, you follow them too. Um, but you know, Dr. Matt Avram from Harvard, Wellman Labs, um, Arisa Ortiz, Sabrina Fabi, um, who else am I missing? I mean, these are you know, the leaders in our field of dermatology. So if you don't follow those guys, you should. Not all of them have YouTube channels, but you know, I think that it's really important to be able to follow all of the experts, like the true experts, not self-proclaimed experts, but experts who are board certified, fellowship trained, highly educated, highly trained in the field of cosmetic dermatology. So moving on, what's the next thing I want to talk about? Okay, new products. So Allergan is about to launch two new injectables. And it's October now while I'm filming this, October of 2022, in case you watch this three years later. But next month, November of 2022, we're going to have first access to these two new injectables. This is going to be funny like five years from now. We're like, oh, remember when those two injectables were first launched? We didn't even have that back then. So um, the two new uh, injectables are Volux and Skin Vive. And I hope I'm able to talk about this. Sometimes with newer things, you're not allowed to talk about it. But Allergan gave me the okay to post on it. And I'm a faculty member for Allergan where I teach other doctors and injectors how to um, perform these procedures. So they're giving me first access and uh, in November, which I'll post probably um, a video on my Instagram or YouTube there as well. See, I'll take you guys to the academic meetings. I'll take you to your fly on the wall when all of these, you know, dermatologists and plastic surgeons and skin experts get together and we learn how to do these different procedures and the outcomes and um, how we, you know, can safely and effectively treat patients with these. So I'm on a tangent again. Where am I going with this? Oh, so Volux, which is more for jawline contour, and Skin Vive, which is the one I'm more excited about. So what's Skin Vive? Skin Vive is a very superficial injectable, and I don't even know if they're calling it. I actually don't know much about it. I know it's a very superficially injected. Um, I don't even know if it's a hyaluronic acid or if it's a combo biostimulatory hyaluronic acid. I think it's a biostimulatory filler that gets injected very superficially for, like, for example, pebbly chin, for those cre creases that you can't really get rid of well we can get rid of them with some certain types of filler and laser surfacing and things of that nature but sometimes we can't sometimes you can only get so far with an injectable or with a laser resurfacing and they're still edged in lines sometimes like in the you know middle of the glabella forehead lines just pebbly skin ice pick acne scars that just you know you just need a little bit more something that's more superficial to target that topography or the texture of the skin that's what skin vive is going to be and the cool thing is is that i remember uh, several years ago when i was on the advisory board for allergan it's really cool when you sit at this round table advisory board for companies like allergan or galderma or whatever company they'll say what do you guys want like we have research and development we have you know uh, to invest in something new what do you need at your disposal what would you like to have in your armamentarium as a cosmetic dermatologist and most of us myself included were like we need something for texture like we have lasers for texture and when I say texture I mean like crepey skin fine lines wrinkles acne scars dilated pores you know right tids or little etched in lines um, so they said, okay, we'll work, we'll work on it. What do you guys want? And we're like, we want to be injected. We want to be able to inject it superficially in conjunction with a laser, something to smooth out the skin or something to st stimulate the skin's regenerative processes to give that smooth, plump contour to the skin like we used to have when we were younger. And then we stopped having because of photo damage and cells becoming senescent and working less effectively, making these extracellular proteins and things of that nature. So I'm excited to share those two new injectables with you too, and I'll keep you on the forefront of that. Other things that are coming down the pipeline, okay, so Daxify. So Daxify by Revant is supposedly, I'm looking at my notes, the first and only long-lasting neuromodulator with a six to nine month duration. So it's a neuromodulator. So in the field of neuromodulators, there, you know, there's several. There's Botox, which is like the tried and true 
product by Allergan. Everybody tries to go up against them. And you know, you have Javo, you have Disport, you have um, Xeom, and, and they all have like their place. Like certain neuromodulators are better for people who are, people always say I'm immune to Botox, but that's not the case. Sometimes their body's just not as responsive. So it may not be one neuromodulator in particular. Sometimes patients will get less sensitive, meaning they won't have the results kick in as fast or the results won't last as long with one type of neuromodular versus another, like Dysport may kick in faster than Botox or Xeomin may give them less of a headache than Botox or Javo may give them less flu-like symptoms than Dysport or there's just good to have different options, but we don't have an option for very long-term duration. So with this new neuromodulator, Doxify by Revance, it's supposedly only like two treatments per year and the long-lasting duration of the neuromodulator will allow for less frequent visits, which would be awesome, which would be awesome. It'd be so incredible to just not have to come in every three, six to, three to six months for a Botox. I get my Botox like every six to nine months. It lasts a little bit longer on me, but I've been doing it for a very long time. So, um, where was I going with this? So that's a new, um, you know, a new injectable that's going to be uh, in the field of dermatology that is uh, a new release, which is exciting. So, so another new technology that you'll probably be hearing a lot about is, oh my gosh, my hair, is exosomes. So exosomes in the skincare industry, for sure. So with my skincare line, MD Air, I was motivated to make my own skincare line when I saw how behind all the skincare lines were when I would go to my academy academic derm meetings to these scientific lectures and hear about all these breakthroughs and discoveries in dermatology and then see how long it took for the skincare lines to pick up this technology. And then they would try to hire people like me as dermatologists to give them the insight and, okay, you guys need to be upregulating this pathway, you need to be improving your vehicle delivery systems by adding these drone technology to your, I, you know, they would hire people like me or my colleagues to formulate for them, but then they would cut corners and, you know, not really follow our instructions. And I wanted to just have my own skincare line, which I could take the technology that I'm learning about all the time, up to date, ahead of technology, and put it into my skincare products and give it directly to my patients. So with the new discovery of these exosomes, you're going to be seeing that a lot, and we're already months before we've been already working with these I have a personal chemist who formulates with me and it's just him and me little boutique little customized um, skincare line but it's cool because these different technologies we can I can incorporate into the formulations and the formulations are always being updated with new information and new technologies on the forefront so exosomes are basically nano sized bio vesicles that are excreted from the cells as intracellular intracellular communication mechanism. So it's kind of like messengers. It's kind of like growth factors, but less scary and a little bit safer than growth factors. Peptides, growth factors, these are all cellular messengers, how cells communicate with one another. And exosomes are perfectly packaged little vesicles that have the growth factors or the signaling or the peptides within them. And in my opinion, they're a lot more elegant and they're kind of in the same category as like a stem cell or growth factor, but a little bit higher tech, more elegant delivery system. So we're already running assays, we're already on it, we're already looking into it, but you'll probably be seeing the skincare industry talking about exosomes in the near future as well. And again, if you're watching this video three years from now, you're probably gonna be like, oh, they didn't even have exosomes in the formulations of skincare line, you know, of skincare products back then. So you'll probably be seeing that because um, it's an integrated part of cell signaling, um, but it's just better. And it's there's endosomes, which are within the cells, and then once they get exocytosed, meaning all the little messengers get capsulated into a little membrane and they get exocytosed outside of the cell, um, that's how cells communicate from one cell to another, saying, hey, make more collagen. Hey, increase your cellular renewal process. Hey, increase your elastin synthesis. Hey, let's recruit some immune mediators here and get rid of all this degraded, you know, sun-damaged collagen and elastin fibers. And let's synthesize new collagen and elastin fibers to make this person's skin look better. So that's how these messengers work. So you'll see a lot of exosomes, I think, in the upcoming months on social media, you know, on everywhere. So new technologies, Elecor, new products by Allergan, Skin Vive, uh, Daxify, and exosomes, endosomes, and that's pretty much it. So I think that's it for now, but be sure to follow and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will keep you in the know, and we can talk about all things dermatology, debunking skin, debunking skin months, doing all these different topics that you guys want to hear about. So leave a note in the comment section and let me know what y'all want to hear about. And I love you, and thank you so much for your support, and I love that I have this YouTube family as well, and um, love that you guys love skin as much as I do. <laughs> 
and what is going on with my hair. Okay, guys, it's Saturday. I'm not in the office seeing patients, so I'm a little disheveled. Oh, I need to redo my hair. <laughs> okay. Thank you.